Hey guys, how's it going? Grade 11 DC class. Hope everyone's having a great time. Well, we've been at this for eight weeks now. Can you believe it? I mean, this is crazy. Of course, some things are pretty cool. I mean, I don't lose my reading glasses anymore. This is my favorite pair now. And my daughter's prom date hasn't sat on them. So that's pretty darn cool. Most of you remember that story. I hope so. Anyway, um, just going to give you guys a quick little once over. Um, I'm cleaning up the uh, number of folks got their pieces to me their final exam papers a little bit later so it's taking me i'm almost done with everybody's though i'm just doing the cleanup now and i'm punching your grades in if you've got stuff you know take a look if you haven't emailed me stuff if you need to email it to me if you need to shoot it in now is the time today tomorrow maybe too late okay thursday okay um absolute last day i know i said last thursday and that was for most folks but there were some people, and you know who you are, who had some special circumstance, and I cut you some slack. By and large, though, if you look and you see, oh my gosh, I haven't got this in, well, you can try. I can't guarantee it at this point, but you can try and shoot it in, and we'll see what happens, okay? Alrighty, well, getting into satire. Satire is a form of writing that is actually incredibly old. I mean, we've got examples of satire going all the way back to the Bible, okay, Back to the Old Testament, even further back than Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, we have uh, parts of the Bible that were essentially stories. Okay, uh, that ended up making fun of various people. Okay, so uh, Christ never uses satire in his parables per se. Okay, but in the ancient world, you saw this a lot, going all the way back to the Greeks. Now, one particular playwright named Sophocles, for example. He wrote a play called The Birds, and in his play, two men decide that they are so tired of city life among the Greeks, they decide they're going to make a perfect city in the clouds. And so they do that. They put on bird outfits, they fly out to the clouds, and they build the perfect city. And what happens? Well... A bird comes along and says, hi, I'm sorry, is your cloud built up to building code? What? What do you mean built to code? Get out of here! And they smack this bird around. And after they get rid of that bird, another bird comes along. Oops, I don't think you paid your taxes to uh, the, the king of Cloud Cuckoo Land. Oh, we don't have to pay taxes here. Get out! And they kick that bird out. And then suddenly a bird comes over and says, Oh, the gods are speaking to me. They say, give the prophets some money. Get out of here! So the joke is, even if you try to go away and make something perfect, human nature being what it is, it's always eventually going to start to fall away. you got to keep your eye on it. It's not going to stay perfect on its own. It's one of the many stories. It's one of the many pieces of that piece of satire written by a Sophocles called The Birds. So, in any case, if we had enough world in time, we'd uh, actually play do that play a little bit and make some bird masks. Won't be able to do that this year, unfortunately, guys. Sorry. But what we can do is have some fun looking at cartoons and TV shows. So, when you did your 10 pieces on Superman, I really liked a lot of the pieces I saw. A lot of you noted things like very majestic music in the Superman scene. Da -da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. Okay. Superman has to keep his secret identity. Lois Lane screams for help that she is the damsel in distress, the DID, they call them in uh, the Hercules movie. Okay, all those kinds of things. Superman always speaks with a confident voice. He wears spandex so you can see his massive muscles. There we go. You get the idea. So, there are all these things that are part of the superhero genre. Now, if you've looked at the tick, you've probably seen some of the ways in which they parody the superhero genre. The tick is literally a head taller than everyone else. His jaw is not just strong, it's all the way out to here. And his muscles are as big as everyone else's heads. He's just huge. He's also invulnerable. And he's, he's thick as a brick. He doesn't have a lot of common sense. Okay. The city he defends is the city. Uh, the other superheroes, the far majority of them, are simply they're not they're not they don't have a handle on everything like the Avengers do. If you watch, the superheroes are just as dumb, if not dumber, than the average person. 
Okay. And when the tick leaps from building to building, you may have noticed he ends up causing damage to each building. Okay, He actually is breaking more things than he is fixing in this city that he lives in. So uh, he, you know, poor Arthur, he's the brains of this group, of this little pair. If you see more of the cartoons, my kids love these a lot. They watched them in the, in the mid-90s, and that's how I got introduced to the tick. My, one of my sons was the tick for two Halloweens in a row. But uh, if you watch, for example, the tick says, Oh, I bet if I just pull something in your, uh, up in your apartment, Arthur, it turns into the Batcave. And Arthur's like, No, it isn't. This is just my apartment. So Arthur's kind of the smart one. Arthur's the one who figures stuff out, like, Tick, you've got to do this, or this is how we solve this problem. That's how things go on. And so that's how they make fun of the genre. If you watched as well at the very beginning, you think you got Batman and, and Spider-Man. They swing and they smack each other at the beginning of the thing. And uh, Superman, you probably don't see this in modern-day Superman because there aren't too many phone booths, but it was a cliche. Superman always had to run into a phone booth to change from his Clark Kent outfit into his Superman outfit, okay? So they make fun of that in the tick as well, if you look carefully. But uh, that's the idea. That's how they make fun of the superhero genre in the tick, okay? I mean, even so, naming someone the tick. I mean, Spider-Man isn't that great a name if you really think about it, but how awful is it to name somebody after a blood-sucking insect? Okay, you never know. But uh, in any case... That's why I did that, and after this, we're going to be looking at a couple of other genres. We're going to be looking at the military genre and how that gets made fun of. We're going to look at the cop show genre, very, very popular, how that gets made fun of, and a couple of others. And then maybe if we have time, then I hope we do, you guys are going to have a chance to make up your own satires. Okay? Alrighty, folks. Well, keep working hard, and uh, really miss you guys, and I'm really hoping that something happens where we'll be able to have the whole class together once more before the end of the school year. All right, but keep praying. We'll see what happens. You guys are awesome, and I'll see you in a bit. Take care. Bye-bye.